And this is Kyle Green, a.k.a. Mr. Kyle Speaks, b.k.a. Mr. Mentality Changing. I'm in the studio with Jay Haleen. And right here in the studio, Jay Haleen with my man Kyle Green. Kyle, thanks for taking the time out, man. Nah, I appreciate the, it. Kyle, the mentality changer himself. <laughs> Mr. Mentality Changer. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. And, uh, for y'all that don't know, man, Kyle's been doing some major, major things here in Columbia and his whole state of South Carolina. So, Kyle, just tell him, you know, I know when I got back here in 2012, you had the state on fire with the Trayvon Martin scenario. So just tell him what lit a fire under you to get get started, man. Um, but let me first, man. Let me appreciate you for no, having no me. No problem, um, man. No problem. Me and Jamar, man, we went to Benedict College together. Um, anywhere I go and speak, I tell people... Often, you know, Benedict College is usually the college that people talk about, they look down <laughs> on, they laugh at. Exactly. They only really see the bad that comes out, and they yeah. never see the good, man. And you as a product of one of the good things that came of Benedict, I'm a product of one definitely. of the good things. Definitely. And it's definitely. several other Benedict Tigers that do some phenomenal things, not just in South Carolina, Columbia, but across the country. Definitely. definitely. So I always definitely. like to put that out there. Yeah, you got to, man. Um, I was laughing at with my wife, you know, um, Somebody from Benedict grad, Benedict grad was running the whole county of Prince George's County in Maryland. Wow! So crazy. you know, uh, you never know where we, you know, what we doing. So we gonna get the respect. Though. <laughs> oh yeah. So, but any, uh, anyway, so a few years ago, and Facebook actually reminded me this, like uh, a couple of days the ago. Memories. The yeah. memories. <laughs> and four years ago, um, I was sitting in my living room, and I heard Sabrina Fulton say, "This could have happened to any one of our sons," and she was talking about her son Trayvon yeah. Martin. Um, so when I was sitting there, my son had a rock star hoodie that he would wear. Mm. And I always share this story. If it's 100 degrees outside, man, my son would wear this hoodie, right? <laughs> and so my son was kind of in between like, yo, dad, I can't wear this hoodie no more because wow. what happened with Trayvon Martin? And this is even before Kyle Speaks was born. Yeah. This is before the Mr. Mentality Changer yeah. was created. Um, I said, yo, like, I'm not raising a son to think with that mindset. Um, so I sat in my living room and I went on social media. And see, social media can be used as a gift and a curse definitely, depending on how definitely. the person use it or abuse it. Definitely. Um, so I went on social media. I said, hey, what do y'all think about doing a rally for Trayvon Martin? And I did it like 1 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking everybody would be asleep. So I didn't, you know, I was like, oh, nobody's going to see this. I'm going to just throw this out yeah, there. See it in the morning. <laughs> yeah, so before I knew it, um, people started liking it. My notifications started blowing up. People started retweeting it. Yeah. Um, Yo, Kyle doing this rally. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Kyle not doing exactly. a rally. I said, what do y'all think about doing a rally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I planned it like two days before the event would actually happen. But the event went viral. Yeah. And so before Definitely. you knew it, um, everybody was talking about it, tweeting about it. Radio stations wanted to interview yeah. me. News stations wanted to do interviews. Yo, what's the idea behind the Trayvon Martin rally? And my thing was... No way in America could I feel like anyone could be, anyone could kill someone and not be held accountable yeah, for definitely. Whether you're guilty or not, you still yeah. got to be held yeah, definitely. accountable. Yeah, definitely. Before trial, yeah, something. George Zimmerman wasn't even arrested for it. <laughs> and yeah. so that was really absurd to people like us on the outside looking in. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and so, you know, the media tried to portray it as a white and black issue. I did it because it was a wrong and right issue. And I yeah. engaged some people within Columbia like Chris Sullivan, you know, Mel. Yeah, um definitely. Melanie Williams, um, Charles Hickman, and we kind of just like put it together, and it was all like a dream that I had that kind of birthed out into something really crazy. So, and I always in my book, right? Well, in my next book, um, the Mentality Changer Two, um, I talk about don't just don't just uh, don't be so caught up in the moment, like in your moment, and not the movement. Yeah, Because, you know, it wouldn't have been a Martin Luther King without the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. And that's definitely. Big. Man, um, I know when I got down here, I was like, you know, I saw you at the next at the candlelight visual, and I'm like, hey, how can we, you know, make this move happen? But just seeing you matriculate from that, to talking to the kids, I'm sure that you know a couple of people say, "Hey, you might need to talk to these kids, or you might need to talk to them right. kids." So, how did they? You know, I know how you're changing their life, but how did they change your life once you got an opportunity to start going and seeing how much what you was doing just for your son can help other people's sons and daughters? That's crazy that you ask that because oftentimes we don't hear we don't hear other people's stories, right? So we just think. Um, 
we just think everybody is fine in the community. Yeah. And, and we see everything that's happening in Colombia, and we see what's happening all throughout the country. And we like, somehow or another, I don't know if we just put a blinders on, you know, like our horses, yeah, they definitely. have blinders, and all they can see is what's ahead, so yeah, they don't exactly. see what's don't, yeah. around them. Um, and so when I go to these schools and I share my story with other students about what I went through yeah, growing up, definitely. They, they they like gravitate to me and they, they they hone on to my every words because they come up to me after and they say, Mr. Kyle, man, I'm going through the same thing. Um, I feel you. Yeah. So I hear these stories and those stories relate to things that I went through. And I just try to show students and I try to show kids and I don't care if I'm speaking at a middle school, a yeah. high school, a charter school, private school, DJJ, alternative <laughs> school, because I speak to all of them, yeah. churches. You know, I let them know, like, yo, you're not in this alone. And I'm no different than you. I went through the same thing that you went through. But guess what? I just chose not to give up. All the yeah. time, kids go through stuff and they give up on yeah. life because people gave up on them. But yeah. I'm not going to let that happen. So, with all this going on, <clears throat> what has been the misconception, the biggest misconception about your movement? I don't really... I, that's a great question. I'm really not sure because I don't really hear a lot of the chatter. And if I do, I got my mindset structured in a way until yeah. I don't let what other people think hinder what I know I'm doing. Yeah. But people may say, maybe he's not real. He's just doing it to get a check. Yeah. Or maybe um, he don't really mean what he's saying. But I tell a kid, if I if you go to a school and like when uh, the Little Wayne's and the Jeezy's, when they come to a concert... In Colombia, you know, they don't they don't go speak at the schools. Yeah. Like when you hit them up on Twitter or yeah. Facebook and you look for a response, yeah. they don't respond back. I let students know if you hit me up, message me, and you need something from me, I'm going to respond back. So I don't know really if the misconception with people is they don't believe I'm as real as I yeah. say or I do what I say. But um, I just try to be the most authentic person yeah. that I can be in this in my whole movement. If I say I'm gonna help you, if you reach out to me, nine times out of ten, I'm gonna help you. So how is how is the transition been with your two kids? How how has it helped them and how how they it changed them? Because I mean, you know, you might have spoke one of their schools or you talked to their peers and everything like that. <laughs> you know it, what's crazy is I spoke at my daughter um I spoke at my daughter athletic banquet mm. two or three years ago, right? And when I got up, I was nervous because the kids <laughs> knew me. And so, and I'm stumbling over my words and I'm like, oh my God. And when I'm talking, you know, I'm in my speech, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm, I'm fumbling <laughs> over these words. Like, I, I'm pretty good at this. I thought I was good at this. And... So that was on like a Thursday, and then I was giving a major speech at a graduation at Virginia College up in Florence that Saturday. So I'm then questioning myself, like, can I really <laughs> can I give speeches? But it was, I think, because my daughter's school, maybe I felt like I had to give so much more because yeah, it was my daughter's school, yeah. and I was kind of stuttering over my words. And I went Saturday to Virginia College in Florence and murdered it. Got a standing <laughs> ovation for like 10 minutes. Not literally, but yeah, you know. But a good, uh, yeah, 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 and let you know the love was there. Yeah, so when, when my, my kids, they always hear these speeches like yeah. they hear these speeches all the time and not necessarily speeches <laughs> I know we said, lecture, yeah, yeah. Lecture. <laughs> so they, they always hear the speeches and we always you know want to give our kids the best so sometimes with my kids especially with my daughter she always got to deal with oh you know she on social media so well I'm at Ridgeview I'm at Keenan I'm at Eau Claire she always got to get students messaging her oh your dad in our school yeah, he's so yeah. awesome <laughs> oh my gosh your dad is so like this okay so my dad's a rock star I get it I yeah get it. yeah so she kind of she she don't like that part of it but my son you know he tends so he impressed me yeah, yeah, yeah. think I'm dope he loves it that's what I'm talking about so now we get to this book man I mean after all of that what what, what inspired you what part of this journey inspired you to write the book I have a book, uh, The Mentality Change, A Journey to Help Change How You Once Thought About You. Um, this is uh, your book with the company. Oh, man. Yours, and you get a pen, The Mentality Change, a pen. Um, so that means I need to get the work. I can't just read. I got to take notes, too. Got to take notes. <laughs> yeah, every, every journey, I don't call them chapters. I call them journeys. Every journey, journey has a reflection point. Definitely. Um, definitely. So something for you to reflect on. But the book, right? So I went and spoke at... Uh, Healthy Connections, Healthy Start, they changed the name. I spoke at their infant mortality luncheon. Like a thousand wow. people was in pre yeah. present. 
Um, and it was in Orangeburg, man. They had billboards up all throughout Orangeburg and the counties that they yeah. uh, served. And I was in Bamberg, uh, Hampton County, all these billboards. Yeah. I had people call me like, yo, Cal, I saw you on the billboard. <laughs> um, so I spoke at that event. And I had like two, 300 people coming to me like, you got a book, sir? I love the way you think. I was like, <laughs> I don't have a book. <laughs> I was like, I actually have something that people want, yeah. but I don't physically have it to provide it to them. So you had to hurry up and go in the lab, huh? Well, it was crazy. So I've been writing this book for like three years now, but I never really... That's usually what happens. Yeah, like I was like, oh, I'm really not serious about a book. And then so much stuff happened in my life with the Trayvon Martin um, situation. You know, my mentor, R.I.P., um, Clemente Pinkney, mm -hmm. um, my mentor from back home in Jasper County. Um, you know, he was murdered at his church in Charleston. Mm -hmm. So I had all these things kind of happening in my life. And when I went in, when, when I would go speak, I would have students who say, man, I love how you think. I love how yeah. you say stuff. So I wrote like the book in a way that it could benefit someone, say, from like the fifth grade to someone that's like 85 years old. Because I had yeah. um, young people read it and I had a grandmother who read it because her uh, granddaughter had the book. Mm. They was at the hospital together. Her grandmother, like, her daughter called me like, Kyle, I got to get another book because my grandmother <laughs> took my book at the hospital and she won't give it back. <laughs> so I wrote it in the sense yeah, that it could yeah. benefit everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Um, so that's really how it how it came about. Like all of my life situation that had started happening over the last four years. Yeah. And then people just, it was a, a desire. It was people yearning yeah. for something more. All right, Kyle, give everybody your social media information and how they can get in touch with you and more importantly, how they can get this book. Man, you can you can find this book on Amazon.com. Um, in the search bar, just type in The Mentality Changer, and it'll come up. You can re read the reviews, read it for yourself, um, see why everybody has been ordering it. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, it's Kyle A. Green. Just type it in. I'm on Twitter, Kyle Speaks underscore. Um, Instagram, Kyle A. Green, and that's green with an E at the end. And I'm on Snapchat. That's the new hottest thing that's popping, right? Snapchat. Definitely. <laughs> Follow me, Kyle Speaks. Definitely, man. Kyle, thanks, man. Hey, y'all tune in. Check him out. Kyle Green. Hey, I mean.